guys? Today we're diving into the mystery of Easter Island. Nestled in the wide expanse of the Pacific Ocean, far from the coast of Chile, lies a solitary island known as Easter Island, notable not for its isolation, but for the colossal stone statues that inhabit it. silent stone sentinels have intrigued and mystified us for centuries, their origins shrouded in mystery. Were they the handiwork of extraterrestrials or the product of human ingenuity? The year was the early 18th century, almost three centuries ago, when European explorer Jacob Roggeveen stumbled upon this enigmatic island. As he stepped onto the shores, he was met with an astonishing sight. Giant statues, meticulously crafted from stone, stood with their backs to the sea, seemingly watching over the island. Roggeveen's curiosity led him to explore further, revealing that the island was teeming with hundreds of these stone guardians. It was Easter Sunday when he landed, hence the name Easter Island, yet the local inhabitants referred to it as Rapa Nui. Even the people living on the island were clueless about who built these statues and when. This riddle has led numerous archaeologists and experts on a quest to unravel the island's secrets. Despite three centuries of investigation, the mystery endures. The remoteness of Easter Island only adds to the intrigue. Its nearest neighbor, the uninhabited Pitcairn Island, is over 2,000 kilometers away, and it's a staggering 3,500 kilometers from the Chilean coast. A breakthrough came in the early 21st century when it was discovered that these statues, known as Mo'ai, were not just heads. They had bodies that were buried in the ground. The tallest of these was an astounding 33 feet high and weighed a staggering 90,000 kilograms. It would require the strength of 500 men just to move it, let alone lift it. So we have an island lost in the vastness of the Pacific, adorned with mysterious stone giants. But who could have crafted these monuments? The enigma of Easter Island continues to baffle us, a testament to the mysteries that our world still holds. In the heart of this mystery, a shocking revelation was unearthed in 2012. A discovery that challenged our previous understanding of these monolithic marvels. It turned out that these statues, known as Moai, were not just heads. Buried beneath the soil, they had full bodies. Now, imagine the surprise of the archaeologists. They had been studying these colossal heads for years, only to find that they had been seeing just the tip of the iceberg. Quite literally, given that the tallest of these statues, once unearthed, measured an astonishing 33 feet in height. And if that's not impressive enough, consider the weight of these giants, 90,000 kilograms. That's the equivalent of about 18 adult. But here's where things get really interesting. The statues weren't just carved and left where they stood. No, they were transported across the island. Now, remember, we're talking about an era devoid of cranes, trucks, or any modern machinery. How did the ancient Rapa Nui people accomplish such a Herculean task? Consider an incomplete statue found on the island. Experts estimate that upon completion, it would stand at 70 feet tall, weighing in at a staggering 300 tons. Creating such a statue is a feat in itself. But moving it, that's a whole different ball. Scientists have proposed that these statues were carved from volcanic ash stone right on the island. A team of 12 laborers might have taken a year to carve a full-size statue. But even with that level of manpower, how were these massive structures transported across the island? The answer to that question remains shrouded in mystery. Theories abound from rolling the statues on logs to walking them using ropes, but none can be confirmed conclusively. So it wasn't just about carving these colossal figures, but also about moving them across the island, a task that seems daunting even today. Let's delve into the people who might have achieved this seemingly impossible task. The Polynesian inhabitants of Rapa Nui, or Easter Island as we know it today, were a thriving community. Studies estimate that at one point, the island was home to roughly 17,500 individuals. 
That's quite the crowd for such a remote place, isn't it? What's more intriguing is that Rapa Nui was not always the barren landscape we see today. Imagine a dense forest of palm trees rustling in the ocean breeze. Evidence supporting this lush past has been unearthed in the form of 25 distinct types of pollen. Yes, you heard that right, 25. This paints a picture of a vibrant and self-sufficient society that had the manpower and resources to potentially create these monolithic masterpieces. These Polynesian inhabitants have been the masterminds behind these stone giants? Now, let's explore one of the most fascinating theories about how these statues might have been moved. Imagine this. Giants of stone towering over the landscape, slowly walking across the island. Sounds like a myth, doesn't it? But this is the walking theory of statue transportation, and it's not as far-fetched as it sounds. An experiment, a concrete statue was constructed, and by tying ropes to different sides, it was balanced. When the ropes were pulled and the statue was tilted at a specific angle, it actually began to move forward, almost as if it was taking steps. This walking method could have made the transportation of these massive statues possible, even over the rugged terrain of the island. Perhaps these stone giants did walk across the island, guided by the hands of the ancient Rapa Nui people. It's a theory that brings a dash of magic to an already incredible human achievement. Thanks for watching. Smash the like button and do subscribe to watch more interesting contacts.